Oh, yes, let's go. Big, big, big adult of both fists. That thing is just ridiculous. Aiden and I just cruised this big Malayan crate. Thailand's most venomous snake. What's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? <laughs> I can't be keep doing this, it's so embarrassing. But we just got off the plane from the Philippines and we're about to get right back to it, so stay tuned. All right, sorry for the lack of vlog entries, guys. Um, my throat is pretty sore. We've all had come down with a cold after the Philippines trip, pretty typical. We were just running off the least amount of sleep that trip and you tend to get a little bit sickly if that happens. But I got some KFC in hand and we are en route to Nam. And we're gonna be there very soon. It's gonna be dark basically when we arrive. So we're just gonna get right out in the field, catching snakes. You remember how good it was last time? Let's do it again. I filmed this view last time, but I'm gonna do it again very slowly just because this is the moment where you turn the corner and just see the majesty of Nam province. You guys will be glad to know that uh, David is here. Yes, we are herping together this time, so you'll probably see a lot of him around. I'll be herping a lot of Cass. Aiden's still here. Harry's here for a couple days as well, and we're gonna get out there, absolutely grind, and I'm sure we're gonna find a lot of stuff, but without further ado, let's just get straight to the herping. All right, so Cass and I just hopped on the bike. It's pretty late. We started at 8 p.m., and first snake is a green viper. But uh, one we only saw one of, a tiny juvenile last time. This one here is Trimerosaurus goi. You can recognize it with that striped tail. You know, the other two have a quite a banded tail. And this one's down here in the lower elevations around a village. So they prefer kind of disturbed habitat, this species. And she's moving quite erratically on the road. Look at her go. She was going the other way, which means I have to hook her and, hey, hey, stop scooting. There we go. Now let me move her into some green backgrounds to you guys. Can observe the Goy's Pit Viper. Red. Oh, don't come towards my hand, please. You look a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. She's very erratic, so I'm going to put her down. 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 Yes, down. And uh, we'll probably see her again. Well, not her, but the same species again at some point. I wouldn't be surprised, or know, maybe it's going to be like last time. This will be the single Goy's Pit Viper we see, but. Yeah, you see it's got the blood red eye and otherwise very super, superficially similar to Trimersurus albalabris, the white lip pit viper. Here's a little close up for all the green viper enjoyers on the channel before we stop taking much of an interest in these, which inevitably happens. All right, Cass and I just hopped off the bike because we didn't manage to pick up any fuel. And like seconds after getting off the bike, I spotted this black and white snake cruising up there. Don't think it's a Slowinski's crate. I think it's a wolf snake, lichen and fasciatus to be exact, but let's go take a closer look. Cass, why am I so out of breath? Put your stuff on the ground, God boss. Look, she was eating, so it also just blinded me. Also, there's a DOR there that Cass spotted, which I walked over, but watch me struggle to catch this thing. Like it in fasciatus indeed. It's so white, this one. Let me turn my light off so you can see. Take a look at that. Little, uh, what is this one? Band I think it's just banded wolf snake. There's a lot of wolf snakes with banded in the name. Uh, and this is the most official one. <laughs> There's Malayan banded wolf snake, white banded wolf snake. That's uh, Septentrionalis and Subsinctus. And this one, like it in fasciatus, is just banded wolf snake. The OG. Um, I didn't actually see one of these last time I was up here with Cass a few days ago. Oh, sorry, not a few days ago, a few weeks ago. And here we are, this pretty little thing. Did you get good footage of it? Good enough. Well, there we go. Second species of the night in quick succession for us. Things are just getting started. Mm -hmm. We all just met up in like the middle of the road. And while we were like talking, Aiden spotted this uh, Lycan and Chapa ensis in the, well, what, just on the edge of the road, yeah, right? Literally just here. Yeah. So just a couple of minutes after I got that first Lycodon, we got our second Lycodon. So this is the most crate looking out of all of them, this Chapa Ensis. This one's a nice little small one, still got some kind of white banding on the head, which you guys can see there. Um, and surprisingly, none of the Lycodon we've caught tonight have been biting. So I don't know what's going on with that. Is it gonna bite you? No, not at all. But yeah, a couple of lifers for Aiden. Yeah. Um, and also I just saw a Gumprecti in the ditch there as Aiden said that he found this. So I'll, I'll go and film that right this instant, but we'll just get one last look at this pretty little lichen chapa. Yeah, Aiden's holding this, this um, chapa there. 
And when I walked there, I walked right past uh, another Gunprex Pit Viper, just chilling up there. I didn't see too many of these while walking the roadsides on the last trip, but we've already got a couple. So yeah, there's certainly activity. So we're going to keep moving, not spend any time with these. Oh yeah, some kind of, in the UK, we call those tiger moths. Anyway, Cass was pointing out a moth, but here we just got our next snake of the night. Ooh, there's some leaves blocking me. It's a big Gunprex Pit Viper up here at 1,700 meters above sea level. Um, this is a male you see here. Uh, it's got a very gumprecti like side of the head pattern and of course the red eye. The females of this species lack the red eye but the males have it which makes them very difficult to distinguish from popes to uh, people who are uh, inexperienced and even some people that are experienced. Uh, it took me a while to be able to just instantly spot the differences but yeah big gump up here male. Um, it's pretty cool. I should probably photograph it but I left my camera in the car. Damn. That moth is absolutely beautiful. So Cass and I just decided to do some checking out a couple streams and after maximum like one and a half minutes of walking is this lovely little Parius Geminatus here sitting in an incredibly picturesque way in situ on this little banana leaf. I saw it from down below, it has a very orange venter, very very visible snake, not hard to spot at all but I just thought it looked cool and this is the first one I've seen on this trip. I'm just gonna leave him there after taking a couple phone photos. Oh yes, let's go. We just were wrapping up the night because it started raining about 45 minutes ago. None of us saw a single snake since. Cass and I were going home and look at this. Big, big, big adult Avophis mountain pit viper crossing the road in Avophis weather. Let's go. Something we didn't see on the trip recently. Something which is always a very, very special find. And look at it in situ here. These pretty much only move when the rain is, when it's like raining a lot. And this is the first time I've ever road cruised one in this area, which is fantastic. All the rest. Uh, oh God, I'm getting swarmed by bugs. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture. Then I'm gonna bag this one up so I can show it to the other guys. Oh, all right, the rain's eased off. So we came back up with this Viper to release it. And I can kind of show you what we're dealing with here very very big for this species like malayan pit viper size of ophis which all the rest i've ever seen here have been relatively small i saw an adult male but it was still nowhere near as girthy as this female individual which is yeah very very a lot more kind of brown with less markings on the head like you can kind of just make out some of the white markings but it's very faded at this point but that said she's uh, extremely pale this one i've seen some big adult females in people's private collections and they're usually way more like kind of dark chocolate brown, but uh, she's not really one to be playing with, that's for sure. I took some photos of her before releasing now, and uh, she was very defensive, biting a lot at the hook if I tried to gently move her. So I'm keeping my distance here, just wanted to show some size. And yeah, this species is very, very uh, easy to photograph. They don't move much. That's the thing with Avophis. They uh, generally don't move for incredibly long periods of time, which is the main reason why they're rare. Their numbers we don't think are actually that like low. They're actually a probably quite a densely populated species, but extremely cryptic. And uh, yeah, only coming out after very heavy rains. So if it rains more this week, wouldn't be surprised if we get another, but they are rare. So very good, very good find. One I missed on the recent trip, and I'm just gonna usher her off the road now. What a cool find. It's been raining way too much to do any herping today, but uh, I just thought I'd show this snake that was caught by a friend of mine. This is Oligodon cinereus, the northeastern annulated form, which was honestly one of my like dream finds in Thailand. I would absolutely love to see this. He caught this and held onto it for us to see here in his village up here in northeastern Thailand. And uh, this one's giant. Like it's actually lost a lot of the coloring they can have. They can be very, very red and black banded, but this beautiful cookery also does not bite, which is a simply fantastic trait which is rare amongst a lot of cookeries, but amongst the Cinereus complex, honestly, they do tend to be quite docile. And you can tell this thing is incredibly docile. Look at the way it's cruising around. Now, please don't bite me as I say that. But yeah, I just thought I'd show this because we're not doing anything else today. I'll get a couple other snakes out later, or at least the Avophis, you guys can take a look at that. But yeah, from last night to, the, to like now, basically, it's just been pouring with rain. It's the first reduction to drizzle we've had. Ah, oh, all right, seems like the rain is finally easing off. There's only a light drizzle in the air now and it's looking clearer in that direction. So Aiden and I getting out on the scooter, gonna do a bit of cruising as the road dries up. Hopefully something will show up. Uh, maybe some stream walking as well. We'll see how it goes. All right, we just cruised our first snake. Aiden can make a grab on this quickly, quickly. Yeah, bring it onto the road. 
There you go, nice northern form oligodon fasciolatus, which does bite, does unlike bite. the cookery snake we were looking at earlier, the uh, Cynarius complex one. Take a look at the ventrals on this. Yeah, pink with some like speckling. Okay. We can take a closer look once it's calmed down. Do you mind bringing it out a bit more into the light over here? Yeah. Not really what I expected to be crossing the road in the middle of the day, but I'm really happy about this because Keith and I caught one of these when I last was here. Um, we caught it at really bad timing though as I was picking up my car. So we just threw it in a snake bag and then it escaped the snake bag when we put it at the room and we never got to take a closer look. Artists. And I've actually never photographed a um, northeastern form fasciolatus, which is this cool like striped Very nice version. Adult, yeah, really unique uh, look to them, these guys. Yeah, I don't know. We were expecting this area here just a second ago, about to go for a walk there, thinking how good it looked for snakes. Also, just got our first like sunshine of the day. We were like, let's cruise. Come on, UV's hitting the ground. Stuff might be moving. Stuff must be moving. And sure enough, stuff was with this beautiful northern form cookery. Uh, a lot of people say these aren't like the same species, but their scale counts align with fasciolatus. So we just call them CF fasciolatus for now, even though many of the features, including the size of the head, seem a I'm little bit distinct. Yeah. My knee. They didn't give them a... They didn't I don't chew, I didn't chew on my boot. I didn't chew on my boot. Like yeah. Any flesh of mine. Okay, come on. Oh, you're not, not interested? Choo -choo. No. Trying to, get, trying to get him to calm down. He doesn't like you. Me is fine, yeah. but just keep him here for a second. Let me... He also way... does that uh, like stabbing mimic with its tail tip. It's really sharp. Ooh, I can't <laughs> chew my knee. Show me the ventrals one more time. As juveniles, they have quite pink ventrals. This one, and like black speckles. This one's just got a uh, very pale pink. This is the biggest northern form one or northeastern form one I've ever seen though. Absolutely chonky. You can see the kind of, yo! <laughs> you can see the remnant bands, fasciolatus like bands, but yeah, we're gonna, let's take a couple pictures of this bad boy off the road and then we can let it go. But check out the habitat around where we caught this. Just absolutely exquisite. All right, get off the road, Aiden. <laughs> yeah, look at this guys. Look at this habitat around here. Absolutely gorgeous. Greened up perfectly. And we're gonna keep searching. All right, so this is usually the time that we start herping about 6.30, but it's just dumping down like heavier rain than we're used to seeing around here. Usually it's kind of light rain or drizzle you get in this kind of part of the country, but this is like a proper downpour. I don't know if it's ever going to ease off, but if it does, we'll get out herping anyway. But for now, we're probably just going to kick it at the room. I am. Look what we just cruised. Probably the biggest sign here I've ever seen in my life, at least like thickness wise. That thing is just ridiculous. Look at the size of that, man. It's like Boiga species like Cyanea usually don't associate with getting huge, but this thing's a good like 1.6 meters right there. Oh no, for sure longer. I just saw how long the tail is as well. Put it down on the ground for a moment. Just like look at the size of the head next to my hand. That's crazy. Got some cool like dark injury markings on its head as well there. And of course, it has the black eyes, typical of the ones we see here. Uh, we saw a nice adult of these last time. Um, you'll remember from my most recent videos from Nan, but this is like so, so big. When we saw this on the road, it was like, I didn't even believe it was a snake at first because of how big it is. I was like, what is that? I mean, look at this, man. Look how big that is. Like people familiar with herping in Thailand or those oh, who like free. keep Boiga will just know that this is a huge cyanier. But uh, my phone is getting absolutely soaked in the rain as are we. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a couple phone pics and then let this one scoot. Still getting soaked. Just picked up another cyanier, so back to back cyanears. This one's like half the size, definitely half the girth of the last one. Still not a small snake by any means. Um, these guys are clearly loving it in the rain. And let's take him to the other side of the road. Otherwise, he's just gonna cross again. Heading. I've learned that lesson the hard way. Snakes do cross the way they were going if you put them back on the side they came from. Goodbye. Just caught this cool little mossy tree frog in the rain here on the road. It's a really, really nice one, huge. I thought it was gonna be vermiculatus, but I honestly don't even recognize this is vermiculatus. It's got such a cool like pointed snout and it really has adopted that mossy coloration. You can see it's got the serrated edges and the green and wow, that is a nice frog. We didn't expect it to be so nice. We just saw a pale colored tree frog on the road. And then bam, look at this thing. Absolutely awesome. For the frog lovers that watch my vids.
People in Europe will probably be shocked by this, but yes, up at a mountain at 1,700 meters, you get crabs here. And not just any crabs, you get huge crabs, which eat other crabs. Aiden just found this one and it's grabbed this, uh, I don't think different species, completely different species, a little montane red, red crab, and it's bringing it somewhere. You can see the red one is actually still alive there, but not by much. He's uh, probably gonna be gone soon, but that's for sure one of the weirdest observations I've, I've ever seen <laughs> in montane forest. Here's a big Geminatus with a lovely orange coloration. Unnaturally orange for its large size here. I don't know if that was English, what I just said, but I know you know what I mean. So I'm not gonna correct myself, but yeah, again, gonna leave this one in situ. These are always nice to see, just crawling around in the forest at freezing cold temps. Here's a nice Magrophorus on the trail. We saw a couple of these so far, but they've all been kind of small. This one's big, but nowhere near as big as these guys get. I've seen them the size of my palm before. They got a nice like dark pattern on the back. One of a couple species of Magrophorus here, but this one's for sure my favorite in the area. Mammals are not at all common in the north of Thailand, thanks to the uh, local village people's dietary habits, but it's got a cool flying squirrel up here in this tree. Let's see if he flies anywhere. Aiden, go kick the tree. Yeah, he's getting ready. Whoa! Whoa! I think that was some awful filming, but you saw what these guys do. We've seen a few of these on the trail so far, but just got our first in-hand Pseudocolotes microlepis, which is these kind of mountain canopy dwelling agamids. On nights like these, they sleep quite low and this gravid female we were able to get hands on very easily. They're pretty like a uh, docile, not, not particularly like thrashy lizards, but I guess it is cold. We're gonna let her go because of course she's gravid. All right, I don't know how well you can hear me. I don't know how well you can see. I can't even touch the focus feature on my screen. So we're just gonna run up autofocus, but Aiden and I just cruised this big Malayan crate. It took us a second to realize what species it was because the rain is just obscuring vision so much. But uh, yeah, it's not fun to be out in this shit, but at least we got a, a relatively interesting snake. Let me handle it for a moment. Thailand's most venomous snake. Oh, oh look, I can focus now. How nice, despite my phone. Being put to the tests of how waterproof the iPhone 14 is. Uh, yeah, we are not going to stay out any longer in this shit. So this is all you're going to see of this, but it's a pretty decent sized northern form, narrow banded Malayan crate. Uh, Harry caught one of these the other night, but I didn't get to look at it. Oh yeah, you can see that. Focus, focus. It's okay. not happening, boss. Yeah, it's not happening. I can only focus at this distance, but yeah, northern narrow banded form, uh, little puppy dog kind of guys. Never really bite, not too defensive, but I wouldn't take any chances, that's for sure. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Shout out to everyone who made it to the end of the video and make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff to boost the video in the algorithm and help the channel. And make sure you head over to exploreherpetology.com and check out our elite variety of herping experiences in Southeast Asia for 2023 and 2024. Let's go.